Hello, today we're going to be looking at the design, simulation and layout of a broadband single pole double throw SPDT switch MMIC. Now when used as switches, FET devices such as PHEMPs are operated at 0 volts VDS and we can see here from this simulation of a switch transistor that when you sweep the drain source voltage around zero volts for different gate voltages we get different gradients and these are varying resistances at zero volts on the gate here we have a very low resistance and when we're up at minus two minus three volts here we have a very high resistance next we're going to look at simulation the capacitance of the switch now the topology we're going to use for the broadband switch MMIC is a distributed topology and we get the wide bandwidth by absorbing the off-state capacitance of the switch into a low-pass filter structure here we've got a transistor and we're comparing it to an ideal capacitor this transistor is in its off case and it happens to be a 3 by 217 micron device. Now it's beneficial from a layout point of view to use an odd number of fingers for the transistors in a switch design. Now we'll just simulate this design and what we can see here is the red trace which is an ideal capacitor and a blue trace which is the source drain terminal of the transistor. Now we've selected the capacitor value which best matches this transistor. You can see that the transistor, the blue trace, is slightly closer to the center of the Smith chart. That's because it has some losses in there. Whereas the red trace, the ideal capacitor, is right on the edge of the Smith chart. There are no loss losses. Now the effect of capacitance varies a little over frequency, but it's round about 0.23 picofarads. The next thing we do is to move on and design ourselves a low pass filter. We start with ideal components. Shunt C, Series L, Shunt C, Series L, Shunt C. If we simulate this performance, we see that we have next to low loss and very good input return losses. We'll switch the history on. We'll disable this circuit block and enable the next one in our series. What we've done now is to replace the three shunt capacitors with off-state transistors and the size of these transistors has been selected to be very close to the capacitors. So if we now simulate the performance again we can see here that's the dark blue trace we can see that we've got a little bit of loss, 0.27 dB at 20 gigahertz. The match is still very good. The next step in our design process is to replace the series inductors with high impedance transmission lines. And we optimize the value of these transmission lines to get the same effective inductance. If we simulate that now, we see we still very nicely match because we optimize the value of those transmission lines to get the right inductance but we've got a little bit higher loss round about 0.5 db and the next stage is to introduce is to introduce a series transistor and this transforms that low pass filter into a switch and we're just going to look at this sing simple single pole single throw switch in its on state so this transistor is on and these three transistors are off and what we see is that our loss has increased a little bit it's up at 1 db here but we're still nicely matched across the entire band to beyond 20 gigahertz we now want to form a single pole double throw switch and we do this by combining two of the single pole single throw switches 
so let's move into our SPDT test bench we'll go down into our circuit here and we can see we've got two symmetrical arms to the switch each comprising a series device and three shunt devices if we now simulate the performance we'll see that it still has a reasonable loss 1.9 dB at 20 gigahertz the return losses have degraded and this is because the parasitic effects of the off-state arm are degrading the on-state performance we've got great isolation 66 dB at 20 gigahertz but this on-state performance isn't as good as we'd like however all we need to do is optimize the component values and we've done this I'll just deactivate that variable block and activate this variable block and we can see that our improved performance has improved considerably we've now got 1.4 dB loss up at 20 gigahertz uh, good matches still to be on 20 gigahertz and still very good isolation the next thing we do is to lay out this switch and here's our switch layout we've got the RF input over here one RF output up here another RF output here these are resistors and these are in the gate feed line they provide isolation between the gate control and the RF path we can see the three finger shunt devices here a source input and a drain output an odd number of fingers is also used for the series device again it's beneficial source input drain output here now what we did is to EM simulate all of the metalwork in this switch and then to optimize the performance of the switch to account for those EM effects I'll go back to my simulation file here and disable this circuit simulation block and enable the EM simulation block here we can see my EM simulation network here and if I now sweep this we can see that the optimized performance is very nice we have a loss of 1.25 dB up at 20 gigahertz we have matches better than 15 dB to 20 gigahertz and it's interesting to note that the isolation is now around about 42 dB at 20 gigahertz this is still very good but is degraded from the 60 dB of the simulation however this is real life that, that's a small chip there is some coupling there and 42 dB is a good isolation to achieve at 20 gigahertz and it's round about what we'll expect from this chip and this sort of chip will have a 1 dB compression point of round about half a watt now if you want to have more information about the design and simulation of switch MMICs then you can visit the Plextech RF integration website www.plextechrfi.com